Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to this very important meeting today, Tuesday, November 5th, Election Day, in the city of Portsmouth City Council Chambers. Okay. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Ms. Madam Chairman. Commissioners, we will now have roll call. Please indicate your presence electronically. Four members of the Planning Commission are present. Commissioners, before you are the minutes of the October 1, 2019 public hearing. If there aren't any changes, we are in need of a motion. Youngblood. Mr. Youngblood has a motion. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion we approve the minutes as presented. Commissioner Thaxton. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? I'm missing some votes. Donna. The minutes are approved four to zero. Announcements of future meetings and conferences. Please note that our next scheduled work session is Tuesday, December the 3rd at 12.30 p.m. 6-4 conference room, followed by public hearing at 1.30 p.m. City Council Chamber. Items reviewed today will be presented to City Council for action at their December the 10th or January the 14th, 2020 public hearing or as otherwise noted. Planning Commission rules limit a speaker up to five minutes to speak. We also ask that everyone please silence your cell phones at this time if you have not already done so. Thank you. Our first item, Z-19-06 Woodland Park. Mark Houston Ricketts of AES Consulting Engineers is requesting to rezone approximately 31.4 acres located at 409 McLean Street from neighborhood mixed use conditional NMUK to urban residential high URH in order to build 197 residential townhouse units. The future land use map of the Build One Portsmouth Comprehensive Plan designates this property for mixed residential. The property is owned by Portsmouth Economic Development Authority and is further described as tax map 517, parcel two. Our staff coordinator is Julie Chop. Will the applicant or representative for this application please come forward and present your application at this time. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Mark Ricketts and I'm the applicant uh, on behalf of the Miller Group who is the proposed developer of the property and uh, I have representatives from the Miller Group here that are if you have any questions that they would need to answer for you, they're here to answer those. And then we also have the uh, proposed builder, which is Ryan Holmes, and we have representatives from Ryan Holmes as well. So if you have any questions, well, they're uh, more than happy to come up here and discuss it. Um, as stated, this particular property, uh, we're actually requesting a rezoning as well as a conditional use permit. In order to build the multifamily houses that we're proposing, you have to uh, have a conditional use permit also. So we ask that those be heard simultaneously, if you will. Uh, let's see if I can do this correctly. I'm hoping. Ha, there we go. Um, as was uh, stated in the, uh, the uh, informal briefing, the property is located at 409 McLean Street. That's what it's generally known as. It's located across from the uh, Portsmouth campus of Tidewater Community College. Again, a view to the north. Uh, the, the property was uh, formerly part of Fairwood Homes or Academy Park. Uh, as a matter of fact, my family's from Portsmouth, and uh, when I was young, we actually lived in Academy Park, so I'm very familiar with it. With this area, I still have family members who live in Portsmouth over in Park Manor and other, other areas of the city, so I'm actually excited to be here for this. Um, again, across the street, you've got the parking lot for Tidewater Community College, and then you have the backside, some of the properties that are the backside of um, Newport, as well as uh, there's a BMP that's adjacent to uh, our development as well. As part of the research for this particular piece of property, we knew that there were wetlands located on the property, so the uh, client had the wetlands identified. We had MAP Environmental go out, 
place, um, place flags throughout the area that identified the limits of the wetland area, then we had our surveyors go out and locate those wetland flags to make sure that they were accurately delineated. Uh, this property and the wetlands located on the property have been discussed with the Army Corps of Engineers. We have not done the formal designation with the Army Corps of Engineers because with the layout, we wanted to make sure that the layout was acceptable because of the wetlands impacts. What we've done, too, with the layout is we tried to limit the wetland impacts to less than one acre for a whole host of reasons. One, the Army Corps prefers that, too. We want to leave it in its natural state as much as we possibly can. Um, again, the, the property fits in with the overall future land use in this particular area of the city as well. Um, again, the site itself shown, the use permit was, uh, the use permit was also posted uh, on the property to make sure that people were aware um, of, of what the proposed use was out here. Again, this is the use permit portion. Can I, can I, is it okay to talk about the use permit portion as well? Yeah. I know they'll be yes, considered sir. together, so I just wanted to make sure that that's, that's correct. Again, the principal reason for the use permit is that under the Portsmouth Code, it's required that a use permit be granted for the, the multi-use um, housing. This is the layout that's been developed uh, for the project. As you can, the red line that you see on there is basically the limits of the wetlands. What we tried to do, everything north of that is the wetland area. Uh, everything south where the layout is is outside of it. The areas that you can see that are highlighted in pink or red, if you look in the middle there, I don't, I don't know if there's a pointer here. Is there a pointer here? Ah, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. In this area here, this area here, and this area up here are the limits of the wetlands impact that we have at this particular uh, at this particular time. The blue are the proposed BMPs at this time. The, the detailed engineering work obviously hasn't been done, but that's generally the concept on what we'd like to do is basically the flow. The flow, uh, we've met with the city staff. The stormwater flows off of this site to the north and to the west, actually towards 264. So it will flow generally through that wetlands area. Uh, Public utilities are available, just to let you know. Water's available in McLean Street, sanitary sewer, actually this particular property and meeting with public utilities actually can flow in either direction to the east or to the west. Um, but anyway, this is the layout that we have for the 197 units. They're proposed as fee simple townhouses, so there will be public streets. The, um, the units that are located here along McLean Street will be rear loaded, as you can see in the layout. They, they will have sidewalks that go out to tie into the sidewalk that's along McLean Street. Internal to the property, we have, uh, there we go, internal to the property, we have these unit clusters that will also uh, have sidewalks out uh, from the unit to the sidewalk along the street, and they will be rear loaded through a private alley in the backside here. This is one of those areas, and this is one of those areas. All the ones on this side of the property basically will be front loaded. Their parking will be in the front of the units. Right now in this layout, we have basically the units in, in principally five unit uh, clusters as well. There are three entrances. There's an entrance here, the main entrance here in the center, and then there's an entrance here to the north, uh, or to the east side, I'm sorry. Uh, Newport, just for orientation purposes, Newport generally is here to the northeast, and this stormwater management facility was built partly to serve uh, Newport as well as the uh, widening of Greenwood Drive when that was when that was undertaken several years ago. This is a um, rendering of one of the uh, types of buildings. Again, you'll see that there are actually four units here. Ours are five unit clusters, but we just wanted to provide you with a color rendering that shows basically the materials, the elevation of the front, the rear, and the um, two side elevations of the, um, the um, units. Basically, these are the front-loaded elevations, the ones that were on the perimeter, except for McLean Street, uh, that have the driveways in the front. That's basically a rendering looking at it from the front side, so that's what it would look like with the units there. You can see that you've got the various color siding, shutters, the different elements for the porches, and then the, um, the uh, garage doors as well. And in various color schemes, there's the siding as well as the uh, stone that's used on the various buildings, various units themselves. Then we also provided a um, 
rendering of the units that are the rear loaded units, particularly the ones that are along uh, McLean Street that we had talked about. Uh, so again, you can see the units themselves, you can see the various roof lines and the various elements that uh, compose the units and the buildings themselves. And this is what it would look like from the front. Obviously those would be rear loaded, whether it be the ones along McLean Street or the ones that come off the private alleys, but this is what it would look like uh, from the front with the sidewalks that would be coming out to McLean Street. We'd be standing in McLean Street on this particular layout. As far as the use permit is concerned, we, um, the staff report was sent to us on Friday. We got a chance to review it. We've reviewed the seven conditions. As far as the conditions are concerned, generally the conditions are acceptable to us. However, conditions two and three are a little bit restrictive as far as they're very specific and very exact. Spe um, item number two, in fact, talks about the, uh, the fence being similar to Newport. Our goal is to, while be complementary, our goal is to have this be a, a different look to the neighborhood. You know, we want to put up a fence that's complementary to the Newport fence, but not exactly the same. So um, we have a, I have a proposal here that I'd be more than happy to provide for you. I don't know if I hand it to the secretary or if I hand it to you directly. Basically what, what that is, is that's a request where we made a recommendation. I've just found in my experience when you want to kind of massage a condition or something like that, just standing up here and talking about it at the end of the day, you can kind of forget what we talked about and what the preference is. So I've made recommendations there for items two and three um, to replace those. Uh, let me grab, I gave you all those. So let me grab mine here and get out my reading glasses so I can actually read it. Um, Basically, for item number two, rather than what's on that board up there, it says a decorative neighborhood boundary fence which differenti differentiates Woodland Park from the surrounding communities will be installed along, along the McLean Street right-of-way. And then item number three, in order to provide visual and aesthetic variety within the Woodland Park community, townhouse buildings situated next to or across the street from one another will reflect different color schemes uh, from site for the siding and stone color. I have notes down there at the bottom which basically state that for condition number two, the decorative perimeter fence along McLean Street is intended to create a sense of place and a separate identity from the surrounding community. So again, we want to do something that's complementary but not exactly the um, um, Newport fence. And then for number three, the colors, materials, and the building configurations, kind of the layout up and down the street, will be used to create a community that has flow, character, and variety throughout. Uh, the staff condition, the way it's written, uh, adjacent diagonal across the street it's difficult to it's difficult to do that as far as the actual unit itself again we're willing to do it with color materials uh, arrangement of those kinds of things so we respectfully submit that as a uh, substitute for items two and three the other items one and four through seven um, we those conditions are acceptable as presented in the staff report and I believe yes that brings me to the end of the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. And again, I do have representatives from the Miller Group as well as Ryan Holmes who are happy to answer any specific detailed questions uh, that you may have about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ask them. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Youngblood has a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. What is the uh, what are the sales prices of these going to be? Just general bar ballpark. No, I put that in the report. Can you? 180 to 190,000 to 250,000. 190 to 250. 190 to 250. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Good. Yes, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And I think kind of to go along with that, to kind of supplement that as well. One of the items that was talked about in the informal is the size ranges from 1,200 square feet to 2,400 square feet. Any other questions from commissioners? Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You if you have, if once you talk, you have any other questions, happy to answer for you. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item Z19-06. I do have one registered speaker. If you would come forward, you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Donna Sai.
Good afternoon, my name is Donna Sy and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. I usually have time to research and write up, but I didn't get the information on this until today when I walked in the door and got the thing, the agenda. I am very concerned about this. Number one, you want to rezone it to be um, uh, high density um, urban residential. Our city is poverty stricken. We've got apartments all over, our town houses. And here you want to build, uh, change uh, the uh, use permit, I mean the zoning, to put in 197 residential townhouses units. It's going to cost between $190,000 and $200,000. How are the homeowners going to pay for this when we are poverty stricken in this city? I am really concerned about the lack of communication to alert the citizens about this program. Sure, you've got that there. What about the other citizens uh, with other uh, annexes in the city? So I know what y'all are going to vote on, and I know how it's going to vote, but I'm going to tell you, we need to do some research on the need for this. And I want to see where the need is said we need this. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Ms. Sack. Um, yes, this is a public hearing. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address Z19-06, you may come forward at this time, state your name and your address, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Hello, my name is Cassandra Evans, and I live at 3160 Greenwood Drive, so I will be directly affected by this rezoning of the homes. I am not quite understanding why you would tear down townhomes that already exist to rebuild townhomes. So I would need someone to help me to understand how is this rezoning something that already is, is in existence and that's also cheaper for residents to buy? The homes that already exist there are cheaper than what they're trying to put there. And they are more affordable as well as how are you going to help those who have to move to be able to purchase something that's more affordable for themselves? So I need those questions to be answered. Commissioner Youngblood. Uh, yes, ma'am. The, the area that we're rezoning is vacant land. There's no, there are no buildings on that whatsoever now. Mm -hmm. Haven't been any buildings there for at least 20 years, maybe more. Um, I've only been in the city for 20 years myself, and, and throughout the entire time I've been here, there been, there's been nothing there. There was a, uh, a, a development there maybe up until 30 years ago. And it was it was torn down. I'm not sure what the, you know, what what precipitated that, but right now there's there's nothing on this property. Nothing at all. So then, by them sending this letter out to me, it was just letting me know that something is going to be built in a property close to me. Yes, ma'am. We're required by law to notify all adjacent property owners anytime something like this comes up, so that they can they can uh, express their concerns. Um, I mean, if we were going to build a prison next door to your house, I'm sure that you'd, you'd want to know about it and you'd want to be able to come here and, and say, gee, that's not what I want to do. Exactly. So, so that's why you got that notice. It's not that we're going to tear anything down and displace anybody. Gotcha. Um, and we have to rezone it in order to allow the building of, of these apartments or these townhouses uh, because the way it's zoned right now reflects an earlier application that I think was for a uh, assisted living facility, and and the two are require different zoning. Understood. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else here who would like to address Z19-06? Appearing to be none, Mr. Ch Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. We're in need of a motion. Just for clarification, the proposed changes would be part of the use permit? Okay. Commissioners, we are in need of a motion for the rezoning of Z19-06. Commissioner Thaxton? I'll make a motion to approve Z-19-06. Yeah. And the substitute conditions. Those are part of the... But that's part of this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Baldwin, is it part of the use permit or the rezoning? These conditions are only part of the use permit. Okay. So this is without so conditions. Okay. Without okay. the conditions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Thaxton. Mm -hmm. We have a motion? Mm -hmm. I need a second. I need a second. Commissioner Youngblood. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve Z19-06, and you will be voting electronically. This item is approved four to zero. Madam Chair and Planning Commissioners, we've already heard from our applicant UP-19-16 is already presented, so we are prepared to move forward. If there is anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address UP-19-16, you may come forward, state your name and your address for the record, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. We're in need of a motion. Commissioner Youngblood. Yes, ma'am. I have one question uh, for the planning staff. Did you get any written comments about this from any of the, of the neighbors? I know you sent out notices to everybody. So, no, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else on the Planning Commission have any questions? Donna. Donna. Commissioner Coleman? I have a question for our planning about the, the guidelines that they submitted for condition number two and three. Um, I would like for planning to approve those based on when they submit their uh, site plan. <laughs> Uh, well, this is the first we've seen of these proposed changes. I'll tell you, I've got some concerns with number two. That is, doesn't tell us anything. That's pretty much unenforceable as a condition. Um, that fencing that we showed from Newport as part of the Newport design guidelines will run all the way down the rest of McLean should that property be developed using the existing Newport project. So if someone were want to take one little you know, smaller section with an alternate fence, we'd want to be absolutely sure that it's compatible, if, even if it's not the exact same design. So we would like to, um, in fact, before it goes to city council, we would like to see uh, proposed designs for the fence um, as part of that condition that we would approve um, prior to going to city council for their public hearing. I don't have any real concerns with the change on number three. So if we put as part of our motion that, that planning, it had to have planning approval for, for two, um, would that would that satisfy? That, that would that would suffice. Okay, I, I would perfect. just like that to, to state in your condition that that our that the point is to ensure compatibility with um, any additional fencing that would be built along McLean as part of the Newport project. Yes, sir. Okay, this guy is standing. Mr. Ricketts. I just want to say that. Um, that, that's acceptable. We're more than happy. You know, we didn't. We, our goal was not to just give you a blank slate chain or link to whatever chain link or anything <laughs> like that. Um, and we're more than happy to work with them. It's just again, we want something that's a little bit different, complementary. Uh, we've talked about it, you know it'll be aluminum or some you know some type of metal. It will have some brick columns, most more than likely. It just won't necessarily have that the bottom brick uh, footing throughout the entire area. 
but our goal is to make it certainly make it complimentary and having something approved before city council we're, we're more than happy to happy to do that or present something specific at city council either way but we'll present it to the planning department ahead of time thank you very much yes ma'am any more questions commissioners need a motion. Motion. okay miss coleman you seem to be the one that can word this properly <laughs> <laughs> but we do need a motion <laughs> Uh, I'd like to make a motion um, with that being number two, that the fencing, the decorative perimeter fencing be compatible with the existing fencing and design on uh, adjacent property of Newport uh, with approval of the planning uh, department and as well as condition number three. Need a second. Do we have a second? Commissioner Thaxton. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, commissioners. <laughs> We have a motion and a second to to approve UP-19-16 with the proposed changes to the con conditions two and three. And you will be voting electronically. This item is approved four to zero. Our next item, CBE. 19-01 West Park View. Tracy Lovelace Transons LLC requests a Chesapeake Bay ordinance exception for a single family home deck addition gravel driveway and fill in the resource protection areas RPA Seawood 50 foot buffer at 1718 Lecky Street. The property is zoned urban residential UR and contains a two-story single-family home and detached garage located within the landward 50-foot RPA buffer. The parcel is designated for high-density single-family development on the future land use map in the Build 1 Portsmouth Comprehensive Plan. The property is further described as Tax Map 62, Parcel 89. Our staff coordinator is Stacy Porter. Will the applicant or representative for this application please come forward and present your application at this time? Hi, I'm Tracy Lovelace. I have never done this before, so you're going to need to guide me. Happy to answer any questions. Um, thank you. Okay, so. This house is at the end of Lecky Street. There is currently no driveway. Um, parking down there is a nightmare. It is on the water. It's been there for over 100 years. It's been a neighborhood eyesore for about the past 20 years. And um, we love the neighborhood. We want to improve it. So in looking at what we could do to make this house marketable and still have it you know, fit within the community, um, we felt that a driveway really was necessary. If you visit this area at all, you can see for yourselves how congested it is. People are constantly driving in my neighbor's yard to turn around. Um, we felt that a deck overlooking the water would make it nicer for people. Um, and the gas pack that is currently shown there, we're gonna move around to the back so that it's not at the water view and it's also out of the 50 foot seaward buffer. Um, this is the external changes and then of course we're going to renovate the interior as well if we can get permission to do this. I've learned a lot about this process as we've gone through it. It's, it's been um, quite educational, <laughs> a little frustrating at times, but I think I have an understanding now of why I'm here and what it is that we're proposing to do and, and why it's conditional. So. Um, what questions do you have for me? I would just like to thank you for sticking with it. I know it is a lot of different <laughs> agencies that you have to deal with. It was. Uh, and thank you, Stacy said you were very uh, amenable to working with her and trying to fulfill oh, yes. all the requirements. So, yes. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Youngblood. Yes, ma'am. Um, I understand that the driveway you're proposing is going to be a ribbon driveway, which would be two strips of concrete about what 36 inches each 
either concrete or, or um, gravel. It's really going to depend on where our budget is when we get to that point. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and that's really ad adjacent to the side of the house? It's it, well, the side of the house has a, a retaining wall built around it from the front and the side, so the driveway is going to run next to the retaining wall. Okay, good. That's what I understood. Uh, mm -hmm. When I originally read the packet, it looked to me like you were possibly going to try and run that driveway back to the garage, but that obviously My original a... intentions was to do that, but when I started learning about the limitations on uh, land disturbance, I saw that we couldn't do it. Yes, ma'am. That yeah. would be that'd be a real problem for yeah. for you. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, one one last question uh, to the planning staff. Did you get any written comments from the neighbors? Okay, thank you. I would just like to uh, comment. Um, this is an exception because you are encroaching into the 50-foot seaward buffer. Yes. Uh, we haven't, I think Mr. Baldwin said it's been 2013 since we've had anything like this, so um, well. just wanted to, it, it won't be the last, <laughs> um, but I just wanted to kind of make that statement because uh, we will be seeing it and hearing it again. Um, again, thank you for sticking with it. Uh, again, and this is just one step in the process. You know, you still have site plan review, so yeah. that will take care of all the stormwater and other issues. Um, good luck. Thank you. All right, commissioners, if there are no more questions. I need to open the public hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on CBE 19-01. There's anyone here who would like to address this application, you may come forward state your name and your address for the record and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. My name is Donna Sy and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. What I was wondering about this is request a Chesapeake Bay ordinance exception. Has the Chesapeake Bay folks been notified of this so that they can have uh, a little bit of conversation about what their thoughts are besides the city's ideas. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address CBE-19-01? Appearing to be none, Mr. Ch Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. I need right. a motion. Commissioners, we're in need of a motion. <coughs> Commissioner Thaxton? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve CBE-19-01 with conditions. Commissioner Youngblood? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to approve CBE 19-01, and you will be voting electronically. This item is approved 4 to 0 with conditions. Our next item, Z-19-07, downtown, Jim Bento with Fairlead Integrated is requesting to rezone approximately 12.5 acres located at 176 Lincoln Street and 0 Gosport Road, Row, along the southern branch of the Elizabeth River for special district with conditions SDK to industrial with conditions INK. The proposed use of the property is to expand the current boat and yacht repair business to a military waterfront services market to include government and military ships and to manufacture, assemble, and preservation activities for structures supporting new class ships at Huntington Ingalls Newport News. The future land use plan in the comprehensive plan, Build One Portsmouth, designated this property as a port facility. The property is also designated as tax map 11, parcels 133 and 133.1. The staff coordinator is Stacy Porter. Will the applicant or the representative for the, this application please come forward and present your application at this time.
Well, good afternoon. I'm uh, Jim Bento, and uh, this is Fred Pasco, and he's the president of uh, Fair Lead Integrated. And um, I know this is deferred for our presentation today, so um, I was kind of surprised we were asked to come up. Yeah. But it's not a complaint. No, no, <laughs> not a complaint, but. Uh, it's just your opportunity to comment. It, the public hearing you. will be held and deferred. The case will be deferred. Okay, and we'll do our presentation on December the 3rd for you. Um, we have a nice presentation planned, and uh, I think Mr. Pasco would like to say a few words about Fairlead. Yeah, okay, thanks. Again, my name's uh, Fred Pasquin, president of Fairlead Integrated. Our uh, headquarters are here in Portsmouth at 650 Chautauqua Avenue. Uh, we reach, recently purchased, purchased the assets of what was uh, Ocean Marine and Yacht Center. Um, we have proposed why we would like to um, rezone this location. Uh, this past Friday, we received word that um, there's $5.5 million uh, designated from Newport New Shipbuilding to provide uh, ad additional industrial equipment to do what we would like to do. Um, so uh, we'd like to exercise that, and uh, this rezoning would allow us to do that. So thanks for giving us the opportunity to do that, and uh, we'll look forward to the hearing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item Z-19-07. If there's anyone here who would like to address this application, you may come forward at this time, state your name and your address for the record, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, we, are, we will leave the public hearing open until our next meeting in December. We are now in need of a motion. Commissioners. Commissioner Youngblood. Yes, ma'am. I make a motion. We defer this until our December meeting. Need a second. Commissioner Thaxton. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to defer Z19-07 to our December Planning Commission meeting, and you will be voting electronically. This item is approved four to zero to defer. Our next item, Z-19-05, Churchland Daniel Heatwell of Ripley Heatwell Company is requesting to rezone approximately two acres located at 3109 Taranek Road from general mixed use GMU to urban residential high URH in order to build a 48-unit multifamily apartment complex. The future land use map in the Build One Portsmouth Comprehensive Plan designates this property for commercial use. The property is owned by William Copeland and is further described as tax map 815, parcel two. Staff coordinator, Julie Cha. If I may uh, mm -hmm. jump in here. Um, for both uh, Z1905 and UP1915, which is a, a companion use permit, the, uh, the applicant is not here since staff was recommending deferral while he uh, looks at revising his application. Um, so it won't be a stat, there will not be an applicant uh, presentation. Um, as we discussed during the work session, staff would uh, recommend a 30 day deferral for both items. Okay. We open the public hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item Z19-05. If there's anyone here who would like to address this application, you may come forward. State your name and your address. My name is Donna Sy and I live in the Woodbine Farms. This Z1905 is in Churchland and uh, it's in, from what I gather, it's in the Ebony Heights neighborhood. Um, and I talked with the, uh, someone, um, a preacher at the new community temple church. And what happened there, the, there's flooding in that area that's not being taken care of. So uh, the lady that lives uh, on Dunkirk also has issues with flooding. Um, and I'm seeing that there's concern about getting a use permit 
for high density urban residential from a um, just residential. And I don't understand the thinking of people who want to build something in Portsmouth without having it elevated uh, and, and the uh, uh, ditches and pipes and uh, stormwater drainage being addressed first before you're planning to do all this building and approving of building uh, apartment complexes where people will have to live in a watery environment that will cause mosquitoes and diseases. So y'all do what you all auto automatically do anyway, is do what you want to do, and you don't think about the needs of the people. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Ms. Tye. I would like to um, clarify, I do, not, I do not believe this is in the Ebony Heights neighborhood. It's off of Tarneck Road, over where the Churchland High School used to be, uh, right next to another apartment complex. And all stormwater issues will be addressed during the site plan review process. This is merely a land use approval. Thank you. There appears to be no other speakers for this item. We are in need of a motion. Commissioner Youngblood. I'd like to uh, combine these two and defer Z1905 and UP1915 until December, uh, just to speed up the process. We can do it again. Thank you. May I have a second? Mr. Coleman. I'd like to second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And incidentally, the public hearing, the public hearing is remaining open. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second to defer Z19-05 and UP-19-15. And we will be voting electronically. You abstain, Mr. Youngblood. Did you abstain? Okay. This this item <laughs> this item is deferred by vote uh, four to zero to the December the third planning commission meeting. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> there are no further further items for the agenda, Mr. Baldwin. Um, no, I have nothing. I just uh, since we will not see you until after Thanksgiving, I'd like to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you back in December. Thank you, sir. You too. <laughs> All right, with that, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.